Welcome to Ghostly. Is Edinburgh Castle haunted? Ghostly is a podcast that usually comes out every other week, except for this month. This is the spooky month, so we are doing episodes every single week. And in each episode, we take a ghost story or paranormal event and look into its complete history. Rebecca then gives us evidence proving that the story is real. And my job is to debate those pieces of evidence and get you, the listener, prepared to vote on if it's real or not. Mm Mm-hmm. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, we're your host. I'm Pat. And I'm Rebecca. What's been going on, Rebecca? Well, you know, we're just getting ready for all the spooky stuff going on this month. We- yeah. So we have Wizard World coming up on October 16th. And we're really excited about that. We're going to be in a panel. Mm-hmm. And we also have C2E2 coming up December 12th. But I also have a uh, improvised horror um Movie. I gotta make play, sure I say that correctly. Horror. Horror. <laughs> Horror um play, yeah, yeah, I would say. And uh that is with Memoriam Development. Yeah. Which is a theater company that we belong to. And I'm super excited to get back on stage and do some improv. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, and that's October twenty second and twenty third, I believe so, at uh, Side Street Studios in Elgin. In Elgin, yeah, yeah, going back to Elgin for that, and then we now love Elgin. Elgin's great. Elgin is great. My family's from there, so it, yeah, I love it. Uh, and then uh, this is just a little bit outside of Spooky Month, but <laughs> first weekend of November, Memoriam, we're actually doing a casino night fundraiser. Yeah. So if you're local and you like poker or other kind of casino games, we're going to have some fun. Uh, or if you just want to hang out with us in yeah, all of our goofiness. Exactly. Yeah. yeah we'd but, be happy to deal some cards to you. There or, you go. <laughs> or roll some dice with you or put a ball around a circular thing with you. There you go. That <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> okay. So uh, we do have some shout outs today. So there are two ways to get a shout out on Ghostly. The first way is to give us a review on Apple Podcasts. We always prefer the five star reviews, but... We will read any and all reviews that we receive. Uh, the second way is to either buy us a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash ghostlypodcast or by going to our website, ghostlypodcast.com and hitting the buy us a coffee in the menu. And um, you could become a, me- a member too to help us out. Absolutely. On a monthly basis. So we do have both kinds of reviews. I mean, both kinds of shout outs here. Uh, the first one is a five star review on Apple Podcast in Norway. Woohoo! So yeah, you yeah. won't see this one if you're in the states. Right? Yeah, you will not see it. You okay. can you can see it on our website on ghostlypodcast dot com and go to the about us and scroll all the way down and we have all the reviews listed there that come out. Gotcha. Uh, so this is a five star review. It's best paranormal podcast. And I've been listening to Ghostly for quite some time, and it's consistently my favorite paranormal podcast. The fact that we have the skeptical perspective is what makes the podcast truly stand out. And I fall into the skeptic camp quite firmly. However, I also love a good spooky story, and Ghostly provides beautifully written tales as well. The good, well-rounded approach, plus the delightful banter between the host, makes Ghostly a fun, informative, and even cozy listen. Definitely recommended. Long may Ghostly reign. (laughs) I love that. Uh, That is Helen in Norway via the Apple Podcast app in Norway. Wow. I'm sorry. This is two weeks in a row of uh, international listener stuff, which is very exciting. Maybe we'll be like Hasselhoff and we'll be big in Germany. Maybe, or something. maybe, yeah. but you got a skeptic there, so that's I, good. I always love that. <laughs> and then uh, we do have a um, buy me a coffee, and it. We want to thank uh, Lori Scott Billings for donating to the cause. Uh, she actually l- left a message on there too, and we'd like to read it. Uh, such a great podcast! I've been listening since late 2019. You have gotten me through the crazy pandemic months, and you're scary, but with a wink. I appreciate that. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, Lori, and thank you, Helen. Yeah. Uh, So do you have listener mail for us? Oh, you bet. I've got a listener mail. 
Okay. I'm so excited. And uh, uh, yeah, it's a little bit long, but uh, but I like this one. Okay. I mean, I like them all. So <laughs> I say that as if there's some I don't like. I love them all. All right. This is from Rena or Raina. Hi, Pat and Rebecca. Here's my ghost story. My name is Raina and I grew up in Seattle, Washington. I went to a private elementary school from K through eighth grade. Throughout my years there, I have heard rumors about the school being haunted and even the woods surrounding the school. It seems the building has been around since 1947. Before my school took it over, it was a private Roman Catholic school for girls. Most of the bathrooms have been remodeled except for two of them, one being on the lower level and the other being on the third floor. I tried never to go alone to either of these bathrooms because they were old and spooky and randomly the lights would flicker. Each bathroom has a room attached to it that is bolted shut. If you crack the door open a little, you can see the the remaining white beds from the people who used to own the building and some other items that were left behind. The school has a long hallway leading into the gym, and in that hallway, there used to be a framed painting of a young girl in a yellow raincoat. It was super random to have the painting there, and I heard that eventually it was taken down because people complained about it, because when you walk past it, it looked like the eyes were following you. Okay, now that you have a little history about the school, here is my ghostly experience. Ding, ding, ding for using the word ghostly in your story. (laughs) All right. I used to work as a counselor for a day camp in my neighborhood. Most of the campers went to this elementary school. And one of our big activities is for the whole camp to spend the day at the school. And then the younger kids go back to camp and the older kids slash counselor stay the night at the school. I love shut-ins like that. Hmm. Uh, I always thought it was so cool to sleep over at a school that when I went that I went to when I was younger. When it was time to go to sleep, the girls slept in the library on the second floor and the boys slept in the auditorium on the third floor. Some years, the boys and girls, including counselors, tried to prank each other in the night. But this year, that was not allowed because something happened and the camp director got mad and all the counselors decided no one was allowed to prank anyone this year. Once all the campers were asleep, some of the counselors went upstairs to the fifth floor. Geez, this is a big school where there was a lounge to just hang out for a little. It got really late. So me and my co-counselor decided to go back down to the library to check on all the girls and call it a night. Once we checked to make sure all the girls were asleep, we got into our sleeping bags and tried to do the same. I would say within 15 minutes or so um, from then, I heard something coming from the hallway. We were sleeping right near the door to make sure no one snuck out and left uh, left it open because we knew the remaining counselors would come back soon. I got concerned because the noise I heard sounded like a baby crying. I rolled over and saw that my friend was awake and was looking at me in shock. She asked if I had heard that. I said yes and asked what she heard before I told her. And she said, it sounds like a baby crying coming from the hallway. We just laid there, shocked, not knowing what to do. The cry started to get louder, coming from the other end of the hallway, like it was coming closer. This cry wasn't a natural cry. It specifically sounded like a toy baby doll cry. My friend freaked because she is terrified of dolls in general. Was Bob there? I I think her friend was was the female Bob. I I think it's possible. She jumped out. Yeah, the math man. (laughs) She jumped out of her sleeping bag and ran straight towards it. (laughs) I don't think she was thinking. And all she wanted to do was get to the fifth floor where the other counselors were. The only way to get to that floor is through the middle grand staircase. I, of course, ran after her. And as we ran, the motion sensor lights went on and the whole floor lit up. No one was around. The next morning, we went around privately to ask if any of the girls brought up any type or brought any type of doll or stuffed animals that made noise. None of them did. We even asked the boy counselors if any of them played any pranks on us last night. None of them did. My friend and I couldn't find an explanation for it. And after that day, we never really spoke about it again. Love the show. Hashtag team believer. Sincerely, Raina. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Raina. Uh, Rebecca, I don't know if I I ever told you this, but something draws me to Seattle, Washington. Like, I want to live there. Interesting. Yeah. I never made made that plunge to do it, but Mm. something's always been like, you know, like when thinking of winning the lottery or something like that, it's always like, well, I'm going to get a place right outside Seattle, Washington. Interesting. And for me, it's the East Coast. Wow. Like I want to go to, I don't even know, somewhere on like the... Like West Virginia or something? No, no, no. Up north, like the northeast oh. corner of the state. Like Maine? 
maybe not that far north, but could be, you know, so, one of those little towns there in the ocean. I mean, uh, I've, I've never really been there too much. So, mm. yeah, I always feel like if I go there, I won't come back. Weird. Something's going to happen to you? They're going to kill you there? No, something? that I'm going to stay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you said with Seattle. Mm-hmm. I didn't say I wouldn't come back. <laughs> well, like they never heard from me again. <laughs> well, I guess it's a good thing that we've met in the middle. Yeah, to right. Do this show. Right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thank you so much, Raina. We really appreciate it. And how do people get ghost stories to you, Rebecca? Oh my gosh! Please, please, please keep sending your stories. Uh, no matter how small or if they're, they could be skeptical. We love them all. Uh, just send us an email at info at ghostlypodcast.com or you can use the contact form on ghostlypodcast.com uh, or you can actually mail us something uh, at P.O. Box number 264, Geneva, Illinois, 60134. And uh, you can find all of that if you just remember to go to ghostlypodcast.com. Scroll down to the bottom. Yeah, it's right in the footer. It's right there. Yeah. All right. So guess we need to do this. We do have some polls. Now, in this one, we're just going to be talking about Conway Castle, but I do have an update for the Enfield Poltergeist at the end of the podcast. Oh, okay. Because we're keeping the polls open the entire month. Okay. All these were just all month long. We're not giving people enough time to vote, you know, when we're only saying like, you know, the episode comes out now and we're recording in four days, so yeah. <laughs> you have to you have to get that in there. Well, plus it's gonna you know my, people might get a little behind listening, all that. So yeah, so uh, throughout the month of October, you yes. can go and and vote on any of our our episodes. Yes. All right. So now we're talking about well, not any of the episodes. Well, since I mean, since Enfield, our our October episodes. Well, and Enfield was September. So. Okay. Well, end of September, basically yeah. October. Yeah. All right. We're gonna go. We're gonna talk about Conway. Uh. So so far, again. Polls are not close, people. No, they're definitely not. So, so far, yeses are at 63.6% and noes are at 364 However, <laughs> do you want to finish this one out? Yeah, I would like to point out the overall ratings. Um, so we, we allow people to be able to do the same thing that we do here on Ghostly, where they can vote on how haunted they believe it is. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot do a zero because uh, of software limitations. But they can do a one, one being not haunted at all, 10 being the most haunted place ever. And we're at 4.91. So interesting. I really thought it was going to be considered more haunted when we did this. I don't know. Yeah. So, all right, guys. So keep voting and we'll, we'll see where we end up. Absolutely. So for this entire month, we are doing weekly full episodes of Haunted Castles. I mean, we've done this before in October. Uh, once because the other time I got sick and we couldn't continue, but, um, we, we did this before, but we always do like a theme where we don't debate until the last episode. And you know what? I just didn't want all that. I'm like, we're just going to do it all every single time. We're doing it. Full episodes. Mm. Uh, so we wanted to search for the most alleged haunted castles in the world. There are plenty of uh, plenty of other ones I would have loved to have done, like the Tower of London. Mm, yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm sure that is considered haunted by some. We'll get there. We'll uh, do it. Yeah. But uh, at this time, uh, that is not one of them that we're doing. And we are excited to see which one you think is the most haunted. Yes, definitely. So that overall rating part is really going to play a factor in mm-hmm. this. So beyond just being labeled as haunted, we also looked for castles that have a very rich history. Edinburgh was that, for sure. I mean, there's a long history, so long. I don't think we've ever done one that has such a rich history, ever. Um, It involves a lot of wars or conflicts. It involves prisoners of war. It involves witches. Mm -hmm. It involves a whole bunch of things. Uh, it's also our first Scottish episode ever, I believe. Yeah. I, I don't think, I think we've ever talked about Scotland. I think it is. And both of us have been to Scotland. Yes, and specifically to Edinburgh. Yeah. And spe- more specifically. To Edinburgh Castle. To Edinburgh Castle. Yeah. So we'd love to come back and do a full on Haunted Scotland episode. 
Uh, somebody had recommended that in our ghostly society. Yeah, I know. We'll we'll definitely revisit Scotland uh, for more uh, at the, in the future. Yeah, let us know if this is something that you'd be interested in hearing. Mm-hmm. So, Rebecca, let us hear that ghost story. All right, let's get into it. It's time for a spooky I need to write this down so I don't forget. Yesterday was the most interesting day of our vacation in Scotland. I should also say the most terrifying. My wife and I have been traveling around Scotland for the past week, and yesterday we finally had our first day in Edinburgh. What a beautiful place. Great day touring, but the highlight both of us have been waiting for was the ghost tour last night. All day, people kept asking us what we were going to do that night. And when we told them about the tour, they would just give us this knowing look and tell us to be careful. I laughed it off as the whole city being in and the whole touristy haunted vibe. And it was great. Exactly what we wanted. The first part of the tour was underneath the city in the catacombs. Unbelievable. Creepy and amazing history, but nothing out of the ordinary happened. The second part of the tour was in Edinburgh Castle. We had seen it all day up on its great hill. Imposing. First, they took us into some of the rooms where the soldiers would prepare for battle. I felt a few cold breezes, but I figured they were just drafts. I mean, even after the guide told us people often feel cold spots in the castle. I mean, it's a castle, not an insulated house. We were outside then, touring the areas where much, so much fighting had happened. My wife tugged at my right sleeve and asked, what's that? I looked at her and she pointed to our right, down the battlement. At first I couldn't see what she was talking about, but then I noticed it. A shadowy figure was moving along by the wall. I couldn't really make out any features on it as it was so dark but it clearly looked like a person sneaking around. I started to walk closer to see what it was, and my wife pulled me back. Don't get close to it, she whispered. I looked at her and said, it? That's a person, and I want to know what they're doing. Then we looked back, and they were gone. No sign of anyone. Now, this could have been a person, (laughs) but I don't understand why someone would do this, I mean, it would be one thing if it was part of the tour and the guide had pointed it out to us all to see or something, and it was night. Who besides us was still here? Still, though, I dismissed it as just someone being weird, which was freaky, but not anything like what happened next. For the last part of our tour, we went to the dungeons. Unsurprisingly, our guide said that these were the most haunted spots of the whole castle. We walked around while we learned about the horrible conditions and torture that happened here. All of a sudden, I felt a tug on my right sleeve again. I turned my head to see what my wife was seeing, but she wasn't there. No one was. I looked around and she was to my left, a little ahead. The only people behind me were an older couple and they were a few feet behind, both looking at something in one of the old cells. I shook my head and thought, I'm imagining things. But then we stopped while the tour guide continued to explain what happened to the people kept here. And after a minute, it happened again. This time, a huge tug on my right sleeve. I spun my head to look and again, no one. I tried to make eye contact with the couple, but they were still too far back and not looking at me. And still my wife was ahead of me to my left. What was happening, I thought. Shaking my head, I turned to focus again on the tour guide. And almost immediately it happened again, an even bigger tug. Before I could even think, I just said, what? Out loud and turned around to see who was doing this. The tour guide stopped and everyone looked at me. I was so embarrassed, but I told them someone keeps pulling at my sleeve. I don't care, but just please stop if it's you. That's when the tour guide told us about the spirits down in the dungeon who like to be mischievous. She said that this was not the first time someone had experienced tugging or tapping down here. We kept moving at that point and everyone just kept sneaking glances at me. I've always wondered what it would be like to be famous, but 
this was not the fame I had imagined. I was happy to get out of there. I just hope nothing follows me home. Wow, that's pretty spooky. Thanks. But again, that's written by you, right? Written by I, me. I just want to make sure. Definitely based on a few of the things that people sure. see, but it's not a it's not anyone else's story. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, all right, well, let's take a break, and then we're going to get to the history and get into this episode. All right. Pat, what do creepy stories, funny ghost memes, and inside ghostly information have in common? Um, my life. <laughs> well, yes, but <laughs> no, it's also Ghostly Society on Facebook. Oh, yeah, I mean, that too, of course. I, but aren't all ghostly listeners in Ghostly Society? Not yet. What? I mean, that means that they're missing out on all my jokes. Yeah, they are. And missing out on chatting and sharing with other listeners and us, of course. We love talking to our listeners. If you haven't yet, you should consider joining our private group on Facebook called Ghostly Society. Let's hope now they will. Unless they're a woman in white. All right, Rebecca, you ready for the Pat Facts? Pat Facts! <laughs> so I am not sure that we've ever done something with this long of a history before. I mean, we've done things with a lot of history, but like yeah. as far as like time, yeah, length yeah. of time goes, yeah. This and I'm not going to do the complete Edinburgh Castle history because, I mean, seriously, we could be doing this for like 10 episodes yeah, and we're not, still not run out of material. We're not hardcore history. <laughs> Great podcast by the way. <laughs> that that you don't listen to, but I do. I have listened to it. Oh, have you? Yes. Okay. I, I think it's really good. Uh, the location where Edinburgh Castle stands has been in use by humans since at least the Iron Age. Wow. Did you know that? No. Uh, so although we don't really know much about its early history, an archaeological excavation in the early 1990s uncovered evidence of the site having been settled during the late Bronze Age or early Iron Age, potentially make, making the Castle Rock, which is where the castle stands, mm -hmm. the longest continuously occupied site in Scotland. Wow. I thought that was really interesting. That is. So something I didn't know when I visited the castle, and I don't know if you knew this, Rebecca, but, the, but Castle Rock where it stands, as I said, is an old extinct volcano. I No idea. No idea, but it makes sense now that I know that. Oh, absolutely. You can tell. It looks, because it's a hill, but it's yeah. not It's not a hill. No, like, it's it's like a mountain. It, it's it, serious. But it looks like it looks like a volcano. Like now that you say that, that yeah. makes sense to me. In fact, the summit of Castle Rock is 430 feet above sea level. It's beautiful. It is definitely beautiful. And you could see it from most of Scotland, too, I believe. I mean, most of Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was the best part. Is I mean, imagine walking around a big city, like yeah. true modern big city. But in the middle of the city is this really tall, beautiful green hill with a castle yeah. on the top. That's It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Arthurian legend suggests that the site once held a shrine to Morgan Le Fay, one of the nine sisters. Ah. And I believe Merlin's daughter, right? Sure. I'm <laughs> not an Arthurian scholar. I'm sorry. Oh, you're not? No. I thought because of your English, you know. <gasps> I mean degree. I mean, have I read some, you know, uh medieval tales? Yes I have. In Middle English. Um Ooh. but I am still not a specialist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the castle has stood for more than a thousand years. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. Uh, Edinburgh Castle and its historic buildings date back to the 11th century. 
Uh, St. Margaret's Chapel, a scenic backdrop for royal weddings across the centuries, is officially Scotland's oldest building, erected by King David I of Scotland in roughly 1130. Okay. So that, I mean, and what they believe was there before was like a tower-ish kind of thing that had no roof. Okay. It it was a structure that was common back in those days Mm -hmm. in Scotland. Uh, The first... Uh, documentary reference to a castle of Edinburgh is John of Forden's account of death of King Malcolm III, which he lived from 1031 to 1093. Uh, Forden describes his widow, the future St. Margaret, as residing at the Castle of Maidens when she is brought news of his death in November of 1093. Fordham's account goes on to relate how Margaret died of grief within days and how Malcolm's brother, Donald Bain, laid siege to the castle. I'm sorry. Bain, yeah. Someone named Bain laid siege. I love that. Yes, he did. Yes. Uh, However, Fordham's chronicle was not written until the later 14th century. And the near contemporary account of the life of St. Margaret by Bishop Turgot makes no mention of a castle. So during the reigns of Malcolm III and his son, Edinburgh Castle became one of the most significant royal centers in Scotland. Malcolm's son, King King Edgar, died here in 1107. Wow. So Malcolm's youngest son, King David I, developed Edinburgh as a seat of royal power, principally through the administrative reforms termed by some modern scholars, the Davidian Revolution. Okay. Uh, Yeah, when you have a revolution named after you, that's that's something. You've You've, you've you've done something, yeah. You've arrived? Uh, I don't know if you've arrived, but you're you're seeing your 15 minutes of fame. Ah, there it is. Okay. Um, Between 1139 and 1150, David held an assembly of nobles and churchmen, a precursor to the Parliament of Scotland at the castle. That's pretty fancy. Absolutely. Uh, Any buildings or defense would probably have been of timber at those times. Although two stone buildings are documented as having existed in the 12th century of these St. Margaret's Chapel remains at the summit of the rock. And the second, a church dedicated to St. Mary, which stood on the site of the Scottish National War Memorial that is currently there. Okay. England and Scotland were at constant war. Edinburgh Castle often played a part in this war of independence. Uh, The first time the English took control of Edinburgh Castle was in the Battle of Alnwick in 1174, uh, which the treaty that followed this bloody war gave the English control of a lot of the Scottish castles, including Edinburgh Castle and another one of my favorites, Stirling Castle. I have not been there. I've been there. It's, Uh. It's really beautiful. In 1186, the English gave control of the castle back to King William the Lion as the dowry for his marrying of an English bride. Mm. In March of 1296, Edward I of England launched an invasion of Scotland, unleashing the First War of Scottish Independence. Edinburgh Castle soon came under English control, surrendering it after a three-day-long bombardment. This is during the time of William Wallace. And you might have, that name might sound familiar to you. It was what the movie Braveheart was based upon, and this was the time period. Wow, so we're just making it to Braveheart. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't start <laughs> with Braveheart. Yeah. <laughs> um, so after the death of Edward I in 1307, 1307, however, England's control over Scotland weakened. And on March 14th, 1314, a surprise night attack by Thomas Randolph, the first Earl of Moray, recaptured the castle. This is during the time of Robert the Bruce, which is another fam- famous character in the Braveheart movies. Okay, yes, now, that name sounds familiar. Robert the Bruce was betrayed as a... Uh, he he was a betrayer in that movie, mm. and he it, it's not exactly true. Okay. He he wasn't that bad of a man. He was pretty mm, good. Okay. Uh, so then there was a second war of Scottish independence. And in 1335, England controlled Edinburgh Castle once again. They held it for six years. This time, the Scottish assault was led by William Douglas, not William Wallace. Okay. 
uh, Lord of Liddishnail, uh, Douglas' party distinguished themselves as merchants from Leith, bringing supplies to the garrison. Driving a cart into the entrance, they halted in it there to prevent the gates from closing, and a large force hidden nearby rushed to join them, and the castle was retaken, and the hundred Englishmen of the garrison were all killed. Wow. So... Again, we have a little bit of a Trojan horse yeah. situation. Yep, yep. I mean, now this in this case, it wasn't just two guys taking a whole castle like we had last week. Yeah, with Conway, but well, Con- sneaky, Conway sneaky. didn't have as many men. I mean, I believe well, that they, big I believe they always had at least three hundred men in in Edinburgh. Oh wow! Yeah, it it could be more than that, but okay. at least three hundred. Gotcha. Uh, in the early 15th century, another English invasion, this time under Henry IV, reached Edinburgh Castle and began a siege, but eventually withdrew due to the lack of supplies. During the 15th century, the castle was increasingly used as an arsenal and armament uh, factory. Okay. And they actually um, bought the first gun there. Oh, okay. Yeah. In like 13-something, I forget, or maybe it was 14-something, I don't know. All right. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. Uh, so King James V, still only five years old, was brought to the castle for safety. That does not seem like a safe place. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, everything <laughs> you've said is like, so like six years later, the this side came and took it back. And then another few years later, this other side came and take, took it back. Seems like a very war-torn castle. Yeah, but it, it would take less men to defend him there than it would in any other spot. Interesting. And if they were out for him because he was the monarch, mm. then, then yeah, right. you would want to protect him. Um, and he survived. Okay. So upon his death 25 years later, the crown passed to his weak old daughter. Mm. So he was five years old, right, when he became king. And the next one became king after one week of being born, or queen. Yeah. And that was Mary, Queen of Scots. Aha! You've heard of her before, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, English invasion followed as King Henry VIII attempted to force a dynastic marriage on on Scotland. I mean, I'm sure we could spend... A lot of time go delving deep into this history, but oh, this yeah. is super interesting part of history. There's a lot of movies out there on this stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and her sister uh, Elizabeth the first mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Mary Queen of Scots spent most of her childhood in France, while Scotland was ruled by regents. And in 1558, she married the Dauphin of France. Mary was queen consort of France from his from his accession into 1559 until his death in December 1560. Widowed, Mary returned to Scotland, arriving in Leith on August 19, 1561. Four years later, she married her half cousin Henry Stuart, Lord Darnley, and in June 1566 they had a son, James. She gave birth to him at Edinburgh Castle. Uh, he would later be king of both Scotland and England. Wow. So, yeah, there's been a lot of English royalty at Edinburgh Castle. Is what we're, Definitely. We're as yeah. well as Scottish royalty. Yeah. And sometimes they were both. Exactly. Mary, Queen of Scots, and all the events that surrounded this time period makes modern day politics look like some kind of pleasure cruise. <laughs> I mean... She, so her husband was, her husband was executed and she married the person that was suspected as organizing the execution. And then her enemy actually switched sides and held the castle in, in her name. Uh, it was called the Lang Siege. Okay. Uh, we could do full series of episodes just on the history of Edinburgh Castle, but I think it's safe to say that there was just a lot of turmoil that happened throughout the years. And in later years, it was used as a prison where several executions took place. Um, This is my favorite part of the history. Statues of Robert the Bruce and William Wallace were added to the gatehouse entrance in 1929. They're currently one of the first things that you see when you go to Edinburgh Castle. And that is one of my memories. I remember looking up at William Wallace. Mm. It was amazing. And it's well done. 
Well done statue. Uh, Edinburgh Castle is located at the top of the Royal Mile. I know you're going to talk about the Royal Mile. A little bit. A little bit, yeah. And at the west end of Edinburgh's Old Town, the volcanic Castle Rock offers a naturally defended position with sheer cliffs to the north and south and a steep ascent from the west. The only easy approach is from the town to the east, and the castle's defenses are situated accordingly, with a series of gates protecting the route to the summit of of Castle Rock. And one thing that I talked to you about is it is like a... It's kind of like a spiral staircase when you go in there. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a walk. Oh yeah, to it get is. Up there, it is a lot of exercise. Yeah. If you know, if you go there, uh, yeah, and you're constantly going up. I wonder if anybody's ever taken a skateboard at the top and went down. That sounds scary. Yeah, I would die probably doing that, <laughs> and I'd probably have to hunt the place. Well, then. I'm definitely going to look and see if I can find some of my pictures. Uh, I was there in the springtime, and there are beautiful um, daffodils, um, spring flowers all over the green part of the Castle uh, Rock, Castle Rock, and yeah. it was beautiful. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I was there in the summer. Mm. So, I mean, it was still nice, but it was hot. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Edinburgh Castle sees over a million visitors each year at its it's a major tourist attraction. Uh, Direct administration of the castle by the war office came to an end in 1905. And in 1923, the army formally moved to the city's new Redford barracks. Nevertheless, the castle continues to have a strong connection with the army and is one of the few ancient castles in Britain that still has a military garrison, albeit for largely ceremonial and administrative purposes. Um, Public duties performed by the garrison include guarding the honors of Scotland uh, and armed sentries stand watch at the gatehouse outside opening hours. The post of governor of Edinburgh Castle is now a ceremonial post uh, head by the general officer commanding Scotland. Cool. And I think this is where the crown jewels are, right? For Scotland. I, For that's Scotland. what I read. Yeah. Yes. I mean, obviously, the British. Or, and that is know. sometimes they're held there. Okay. Gotcha. Sometimes they go on tour. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All museums. Yeah. They kind of do that stuff. But yeah, there's definitely, um, I remember a lot of Scottish history to, to be seen there as yes. well as to, to walk around and kind of see the, the castle it, itself. It is the equivalent of England's Tower of London yes. where they have the crown jewels there as exactly. well. Exactly, right. Yeah, and I, I do remember actually seeing the crown jewels of Scotland when I was there. Uh, I did as well. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Uh, all right, you have anything else to add? No, no, and just to, to people know, we were not there at the same time. No. No. No, I didn't know you then. No, we did not know each other then. I was there in the year 2000. In the year 2000. I knew you were going to do that, but that's when I was there. I was there in 97. Wow. I I believe. So So you were like three years old then, right? Yes, exactly. Yep. (laughs) See, I'm good at the math. Yes, exactly. All right. uh, Well, let's go ahead and take another break and then we'll get into the debate. Sounds good. Listeners, did you know there's a way to share with the world whether you're hashtag team believer or hashtag team skeptic, or for those who need it, hashtag team the middle? It's our store called Ghostly Gear. Yep. And we even have custom ghostly designs like microclimate or even the Easter Island Massacre or of the ghostly logo. Just visit our Ghostly Gear store right on ghostlypodcast.com to order your t-shirt, hoodie, mug, mask, whatever. <laughs> okay, okay. I think we got it. Um, they're, they just need to visit ghostlypodcast.com and click on Ghostly Gear to order right on the website and send us any ideas that you have for new merch. Exactly. Order your merch today and send us a pic of you and your ghostly gear. Thank you. 
All right, we're back for the debate. Yes, we are. <laughs> I don't usually do the intro, but I'm I'm excited to do it. You did it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, paranormal activity has been reported by hundreds of staff and visitors over the years to Edinburgh Castle. Um, to this day, people report witnessing apparitions, feeling unwelcome presences, seeing shadowy figures, being touched by non-human forces, and experiencing sudden temperature changes in and around the structure. Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, we're going to talk about a few of the specific ghosts that are reported, and then we're going to talk about just that kind of general haunted experiences people report. All right. Okay. One of the most popular stories is that of the ghostly bagpiper boy i like it because it says <laughs> ghostly okay this version i'm about to share is from inews but there are many out there uh several hundred years ago some secret tunnels were found beneath edinburgh castle leading towards hollywood holly holly rude house is that their version of Hollywood? I guess. I keep wanting to say Hollywood <laughs> there. So Holly Rood House at the bottom of the Royal Mile that you mentioned. Yes. Uh, as the opening to the tunnel was really small, a young boy was sent down with his bagpipes to investigate. He played the pipes loudly as he walked through the tunnel so people above ground could work out where the tunnel went. The pipes stopped Abruptly, when they reached the Tron Kirk, and I don't know where that is, but it's somewhere. Uh, is that like Tron, <laughs> like the movie? Maybe. I don't know. So uh, everything got lit up with neon? I know. Well, I think this was a long time before neon. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Okay. This isn't super modern <laughs> story. Uh, and although the search parties were sent, search parties were sent to find the boy, he was never seen again. Uh, with the Piper presumed dead, the tunnel was blocked up. But many people still report hearing the faint ghostly sound of underground bagpipes to this day. Hmm. That's really interesting. And this is not the only boy with musical instruments in this castle, but this is the one I picked because I thought it was interesting. Okay. Um, you know, I'm going to say, first of all, that the boy dying in these tunnels, uh, the tunnels might have collapsed on him or something. So I... I don't think that that is like mysterious or anything like that, um, especially with bagpipes being played in these small tunnels. Mm. Uh, they're really loud, and That's true. they're like a, like have a piercing sound. Mm. Have you ever been around a bagpipe? Uh, yes. And they're pretty piercing. They are. So yeah, so that part I, I want to hear think. from ghostly listeners that play bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I might know of one, actually. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, so, anyways, uh, that part to me doesn't seem like a uh, crazy mystery. So, sure. But that's not the part we're debating. It, it isn't, because I would agree. There's plenty of natural reasons that he could have died in the tunnel. And the reason why the tunnels are there is probably for escape routes, mm. you know, from the castle, because uh, you don't want to get detained in the castle for months and have them... Uh, sweat you out of all your food and everything. So, sure, sure. Uh, so that that's not the part we're debating. But what we are debating, though, is the report of hearing the faint ghostly sound of underground bagpipes. Yes. So what I'm going to say about this is where Edinburgh Castle is, it's a very historic area. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there could very well be bagpipes being played. In the I mean, distance. In Scotland, there's bagpipes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially in a historic part of Scotland. True. Very touristy, too. Yeah. So I don't think that this is crazy to think that they could hear that. So it's like wafting from the air. It's kind of coming up there and people are hearing it, is what you're saying. Well, sound bounces off of walls. And so it could have bounced off a couple of walls. It could actually be coming up from the tunnels, but... Uh, maybe where the entrance of the tunnel is, is where the bagpipes are being played. I think it's the ghost boy in the tunnels. <laughs> when I was there, actually, <laughs> when I was there, when our tour bus pulled up, I feel like such a rock star saying that, but it was really <laughs> like you pay for a tour. Yeah. I mean, anyways, when our tour bus pulled up, uh, you know, and I got out with my bottle of Jack Daniels and everything because I was a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> um, there were actually bagpipe players there in the front. Yeah, but they didn't seem ghostly to you. 
No, but if I heard it from a different spot in the castle, it would sound ghostly. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if I couldn't see the person playing it, it would sound ghostly. Mm, interesting. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm proud of how often we've said ghostly already. Ghostly, ghostly, ghostly. <laughs> fart, fart, fart. Hey, okay. none of that. <laughs> All right. So what's your rating of this one? I'm going to go a one on this Ooh, one. Ooh, that's surprising. Yeah. I mean, just because I don't have any evidence of it. Do you have any recordings of it? No, or I couldn't find anything. So I that, can't so. tell if it's real uh, being played at the moment or mm-hmm. not. I'm going to give this one a, a, a six. Okay. Yeah, because I... I Again, couldn't find any re- you know recordings of it, but definitely a lot of reports of it. Uh, but you make a compelling argument. But it could also be pre pre recorded bagpipe music, and I'm not saying they're doing this to, um, you know, freak people out or to get people <laughs> to. I'm just saying it could be played in another part of the castle and echo through to that part. All right, let's all go listen to some bagpipe music after Ghostly today. Oh, absolutely! All I right. love bagpipes. Yeah. All right, I've got another piece of evidence here. Uh, okay. Our next story is that of a witch. Whoa. You mentioned witches uh, earlier um, when you are kind of talking about our episode here. Um, and we, by the way, I do not see witches as being bad things. That's true. Uh, it, like a real witch as opposed to like yeah. the, what we're talking about here. Um, so we did our Salem episode a few months ago with our good friend Jacob Mayfield. Please go listen to that episode if you haven't. Yeah, because he's awesome. And check out his website. <laughs> yes. Uh, but Mayfieldmagic.com. Yes. Um, but Salem and the U.S. Were, uh, were not the only place where women, uh, and sometimes men, were accused of witchcraft. In the 16th and 17th centuries, Scotland had its own witchcraft hysteria. And Edinburgh Castle was an important location for it. Around 300 alleged witches were imprisoned and tortured um, at, at the castle, um, and I think also maybe one other place as well, uh, before being executed during this time. One of the most famous witches was Lady Janet Douglas of Glemis, who was accused of witchcraft and conspiring to kill King James V. Her servants had been tortured into confessing her guilt, and in 1537 she was burned alive at the stake, with her young son forced to watch. I think he was a teenager. Um, Visitors to the castle have reported seeing the ghostly figure of Mm. Lady Janet roaming the halls and weeping. Wow. I I wonder if she's related to the other Douglas, the William Douglas, Mm. that uh, took control of the castle for a very long time. Yeah, I don't know. I just know definitely, you know, she was innocent. I mean, shoot, this woman was not a witch. Um, but they wanted to remove her from the board, I guess we'll say, of the Game of Thrones, right? Um, and so, or just mm. whatever. Um, and so they, you know, it's like they captured her, and then they took all of her servants and friends, and basically tortured them into confessing, or you know, quote unquote, confessing um, and blaming her for being a witch. For the night is dark and full of terror. Yes. Uh, okay, for this one. I'm going to say that, um, you know, this castle, uh, it's very interesting and, and it's very dark. It's even like the stones are like darker than most castles that you would see. The brick or the rock that was used to make them was, it's very dark. And, um, given the way that it, faces the east i would say that it would it, it could definitely have a lot more shadows than most places that you would go to so i'm really thinking um that it's possible that somebody saw some kind of shadow of somebody else and assumed it was that interesting yeah hmm all right. Well, I, you know, again, this one's difficult. Again, it's one of those apocryphal stories. You know, people talk about that people see this ghost I didn't find any particular evidence of of her. There was no picture or or anything like that. Um, But, uh, you know, I do believe that there is paranormal activity there. And and could she be one of those figures that people claim to see? I mean, she would have a reason. She would have a reason to be there. So it's possible for me. So would the thousands of other people that died there. I mean, yeah. So She's I'm just, just saying. one of them. Exactly. Yeah. 
So what's your rating? Zero. Zero. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go six again for this one. Oh, a double six. Yeah. Wow. Again, seems like. Are you gonna do another six? Be... Six, six, six. We'll see. Ooh. We'll see. It is. It is the haunting season. So. <laughs> it is. Uh, all right. So um, next one, uh, Witchers. Witchers, witches. I'm excited for The Witcher. The Witcher was a really good video game. It was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so was the first season of the show. Yeah. Um, witches were not the only prisoners in the castle dungeons. Ooh. Obviously, the dungeons are considered one of the most haunted places in the castle, and there are many reports of paranormal activity here. But my favorite story. <laughs> <laughs> is it, I'm sorry, I should not laugh. This is sad. Uh, my favorite story is about a man who tried to escape. Mm. He tried to escape by burying himself in a wheelbarrow full of dung. Dung? Like, dung. Like poopies? Like as in, yes, people poo. Poo poo. Oh, it wasn't like horse poop. It was people mm. poo. Uh, no, I don't know about that. Oh, okay. That's a good point. I don't actually know what kind of poo. But it could Most of the time be. when people say dung, they're not referring to human. That's true, except that, I don't know, like it was in the dungeon, like what he had access to, like were there animals down there? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Let's just say it was he, it was animal. Okay. Uh, anyways, he thought they'd wheel the bear, wheelbarrow and him like outside and dump it. Instead, they dumped the wheelbarrow out a window uh. where he crashed into the steep rocks and was killed. As you said, on a couple sides there, it's all like steep rock face. Um, so he is said to haunt the castle and uh, he's very disgruntled uh, and he attempts to push people, uh, especially out the window. Okay. Oh, and supposedly... <laughs> You smell poo when he is oh, near. Oh my god! Now we're going to get accused of farts again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't not tell this story. I mean, again, there are so many stories at this castle, but this was this was uh, one I had to share. Okay, now most of the time dungeons are underneath, you know, like in like a basement where there would be no windows. But this, I know, uh, I have seen the actual dungeons. Mm -hmm. And they do have some light. Their windows are very small, though, so I don't think you could actually push someone through. Well, and they may have taken it up a floor, but they just didn't take it like out to the front gate and go out that way. It was like they just dumped it out a window. Okay, um, I, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you know, maybe someone on their tour, <laughs> maybe, maybe they farted or something. <laughs> <laughs> I got bad to say fart. I know, and I didn't want to. You keep bringing up this poopy evidence. <laughs> hmm. So, no, I don't think that this is anything. <laughs> All right. So well, you're saying there's a poop monster <laughs> in the dungeon. I'm just saying there is a ghost who died tragically um, covered in dung mm. we'll say and that uh you know again people uh do have uh have reports of paranormal activity and one of them is being pushed and Ooh. he is maybe of... maybe it was from the sushi in the tsunami episode that we did <laughs> to, to, Toy toyama toyama yeah ah maybe it was the sushi in there maybe, maybe. remember we talked about the bathroom thing there you're just you're just obsessed with bathroom <laughs> stuff. Well, we do have kids that listen, and who doesn't like poopy humor? I don't necessarily need it, but okay. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, I'm going to give that one a zero. A zero. All right. I'm actually giving this one a seven. A seven? Yes, because people are being pushed on there. And then if there's a scent attached to it, yeah, I'm a little. I, I believe this one a little bit more. It's a scent we're all capable of reproducing, <laughs> let me just say. I don't know if you're... If your farts are smelling like poopies, I don't know if that's a if that's okay. You maybe should go because yours see smell somebody. like roses. Well, they don't smell like poopies. They smell mm -hmm. smell good. <laughs> but I okay. don't fart. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's true. You don't. Okay. All right, guys. <laughs> last one. Last one. Now we're gonna get a little more serious here. Okay. Uh, so there are so many more stories. I wish we had time for. Um, there's a ghost dog. A headless drummer boy. 
But I thought maybe we should do just a general debate about the paranormal activity that people feel. Cold spots, touches, you know, shadow figures, all that. Uh, By talking about a scientific study done in 2001 to test the castle's paranormal activity. We okay. don't often get this. No, we don't. Okay, here we go. This is from Time Magazine. In 2001, Edinburgh Castle became the site of one of the, the largest paranormal investigations in history. A team of nine researchers and over 200 members of the public explored the castle's forgotten chambers and secret passages for signs of ghostly happenings. I can't... <laughs> it's, it just is what the it said. All right. The public was not told which areas of the castle were rumored to be haunted and which were not. 51% of participants in haunted areas reported paranormal experiences, while only 35% did so in the non-haunted areas. Shadowy figures, sudden drops in temperature, and the feeling of something tugging on your clothes are all everyday experiences in Edinburgh. And what about poopy smells? Okay. They didn't mention that part. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm glad. All right. So um, Time Magazine, I think, was doing this to try to frighten people a little bit. Whoa, that's a a, big accusation. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're not a sponsor. (laughs) If they became a sponsor, I might change my tune about that. But the BBC uh, actually had an article um, by Dr. Weissman. And that is one of the doctors that actually performed the whole uh, experiment. Yes. Okay. Dr. Weissman, who remained skeptical about the existence of ghosts, said he believed the background light from beyond the vaults, archways, and the size of the vaults appeared to be a factor. So Edinburgh Castle is widely believed to be haunted. We measure air temperature, air movement, magnetic fields, and light levels from outside the vaults. When it was darker outside in the corridor, then people reported far more experiences inside the vaults. So there's obviously a sense of not knowing what's going on outside the corridor, and that's leading to people perhaps being more anxious. He added, the haunted vaults had twice as much floor space, and they were about one-third higher. That either means ghosts like large spaces to live in, or these physical measurements are having an impact on people's psychology. Okay. Now, I would also like to say that they did recruit participants from all over the world that did not have a pre, like pre knowledge of what was haunted and what wasn't. And Dr. Weissman is not saying that they knew that yeah. these places should be haunted. And they did also have paranormal equipment like thermal imaging and sensors, temperature probes, all of that. So it wasn't like people were just like, I feel like it's cold. They like literally, you know, had temperatures or they felt things touching them. That's not what the article says. The article says that 51% of the people stated that a place was haunted when they suspected that it was haunted. That's true. But they didn't know that where they were was supposedly considered a haunted place. By the way, that's not huge numbers. 51% 51% and 35%, that's really not. It's not. It's not overwhelming. So slightly. I'm just going to say that this, uh, that Dr. Weissman does find this encouraging, but this he specifically says this is not proof of paranormal. Mm. Now, I will say in another article that I found, um, again, back on that iNews, it said the volunteers reported not only the sudden drops in temperature, but they did report seeing shadowy figures, a feeling of being watched, a burning sensation on the skin, and then people tugging at them. But again, Dr. Weissman did say that um, when when it was darker outside, people would experience more frights and mm. be more be more anxious. Gotcha. And that's what could be causing these things to happen. Your mind plays tricks on you when you're when you're that anxious. You have that fight or flight thing going on. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so what's your uh, rating then? I'm going to have to go zero, although I appreciate all the research that was done into this. I'm going to have to go zero. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go eight. I'm eight? sorry, but this what? was like random trial people put into two. Like, okay, but the person said. They didn't know. The person that did the experiment said that he didn't think it meant anything paranormal. Uh, yeah, the skeptical person who did the study, gee, surprise, was skeptical. 
<laughs> okay, Rebecca. <laughs> I'm going to say the numbers... They show a bit of haunting. I'm so, I'm going to go All with right. it. I got to go with it. I can't not go with it. All right. So what is your overall rating for Edinburgh Castle? Uh, I'm going to say a seven is my overall okay. rating. Yep, absolutely. Because I think there's been a lot of reports. Again, a little bit of a study. Uh, but yet I didn't necessarily find a lot of like pictures or videos or things like that. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to go with the zero because that's an average of my scores. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I do not think it's haunted at all. That brings us to our closing arguments. This is our last chance to convince you to vote our way. We are each given one minute of uninterrupted time. We will time each other on our cell phones to keep Rebecca honest. You ready? <laughs> yes. And go. All right. I do believe that Edinburgh Castle is haunted. Of all the places that we have talked about, um, I, I, you know, I was in Edinburgh, I was in the castle. Did I experience anything? No, but I was there during the day. And I, and at that time I wasn't thinking of the castle as being haunted. Um, but uh, you know, I did, I was in Edinburgh. I did take a ghost tour. Where we went into those catacombs and, um, man, that place just has this town, just city has so much of a history. Uh, and then when it comes to the um, castle itself, again, so many reports from people that uh, visit, people that work there. And then we have a, literally a scientific study where it kind of leaned paranormal. I mean, you know, again, people didn't know if they were going to be in a paranormal area or a not paranormal area. They didn't know what was considered what. Um, and the people that were in the more the air, paranormal areas were more likely to report. So it's it's haunted. All right. I mean, you just squeaked that one in there. Yeah, I did. All right. I am ready whenever you are. Okay. And go. Again, we find ourselves at, at, at a historic place. And when we are in these historic places, it's easy for people to think of the history before thinking of common sense, logic, and scientific proof. Just because a lot of people died here, just because this place is a thousand years old, doesn't mean it has to have hauntings. We can say no. It is okay to say no. It is not haunted. Uh, the evidence pr presented here is not enough. Not enough to say that anything is significantly proof of, of a haunting. And I am done. Oh, you sounded like you were talking to a jury there. Well, that's kind of what this is, Rebecca. It is like that. Yes, that's yeah. true. Because we don't decide. You guys decide. Yeah. And also, I'd like to close with that. As promised, we are keeping the polls live for the entire month of October. So here's an update on the Enfield Poltergeist. Rebecca, do you want to read those out? Sure. Uh, all right, guys. So last time we were at 50-50. Fitty fitty Yeah. Now, yes, 41.7 oh, yes. and no 58.3 with an overall rating of just four so if you are a believer or a skeptic go vote so where can they go vote they can go to ghostlypodcast.com and click on polls or go to ghostlypodcast.com slash polls yeah and fancy. on all of our social media we post a link to that when the polls are open the day after the episode comes out you got it although the polls are usually open the day the episode comes out too they are they are so get out there vote uh again share the word spread the word about the episodes get your get your friends listening get them voting uh we love this yeah, word of mouth is our best form of advertisement, and we really appreciate all of you for telling your friends and family. If you want to support Ghostly, that is one of the best ways that you can, and it's totally free. Absolutely. Best thing you can do. So we are doing weekly episodes, as we have said, and on our ne and next week, we are going to be talking about Casa Loma, which is in Toronto. And that comes out October 20th, which is next Wednesday. Yeah, so we're going a little closer to home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I have been there. I very, know you have not. I have not, so very exciting. I've Can't been wait to all hear over it. Casa Loma. Ooh, that sounds a little dangerous. I've been everywhere in that place. <laughs> and I do mean everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Can't wait for these stories, <laughs> maybe. There will be no poopy stories, though, Rebecca. <laughs> promise them. I cannot promise that. Depends oh, on what geez. I find. You love talking about the poops. Uh, okay. Well, we will talk to you next time. And until then, stay ghostly. Bye.